Hey everyone, today we'll be looking at some of the prelim builds for set 11. And uh, I think I did a mistake. I usually just do new decks, but this time I did all the decks. Well, not all the decks, but even the glitter ones. So we have 10 decks today, but they're generally going to be pretty quick to go through because some of the glitter decks are just straight up upgrades from before without uh, that many changes. Of course, again, I have to emphasize these are prelim builds. These are there just to help you out to, uh, you know, first day, have a deck, slap a deck together to test out and, and see how it goes, right? I'm sure through even more testing, uh, you will find, everyone will find better decks, right? More precise decks, more processed decks uh, to play with. So that's that. These are just to help out for your day ones, yeah? Uh, so let's kind of get started. So first off we have is just the Tamiyura deck. Um, I don't, when building this deck, I'm not gonna lie. I just, this is one of the first decks I was going like, Wow, you know, you literally just slap in four of the new the new Tamiyura, take out some of the old Tamiyura, and uh, you're pretty much uh, good to go, right? Uh, you, you plug in all the old support, right? All the Lalamis and Rumis, and then you, you put in the order, and then, hey, done. The deck is done. Um, I'm sure there'll be much more min-max decks, by the way, for this. Uh, if you if, if there is if there is such a thing, but this is just pretty much just the most straightforward uh, Tamiura deck by the way also uh, all the trigger lineups I think you can easily change your heals I'd say any of the effect heals that you want I'm just putting in the OG ones the fronts you can change the draws if you like that uh, And then yeah, it's 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 pretty much there also all the deck codes will be in the description below So you can check that out. They'll be in Jap Japanese deck log not English one, so don't put in your JP deck code in the English deck log because that's not going to work, right? But yeah, pretty much Tammy, you are very, very straightforward. Uh, not not much changes. That's pretty much it. So the next thing we have is Vermilion. Vermilion's pretty cool. Uh, it allows you to attack multiple things at once, right? You can CB1 and then now you get extra power, 5k, and then you can select two regards to attack when you attack the Vanguard and you just battle all of them. So that's just like the old. Uh, just like Vermilion, right? Or maybe not the old Vermilion, but it's pretty much very M Vermilion like. Uh, the other effect is that it also allows you to ping one. So uh, if you've played a normal order this turn, um, at the end of the battle, you can discard a card from your hand and then just ping one to them. So nice, lets you uh, push that. Uh, they have to be a four damage or less, so you can't just kill them. It just allows you to push damage and then force them to go to five damage very quickly. And then, you know, you can start you know, putting on extreme pressure. The order we're talking about is just this order. This uh, lets you, uh, w this makes it so when you attack and then bind things, uh, hit things, sorry, and then retire them, you bind them, okay? So very, very effective against things like Ava, where they have those obs gates, which are very annoying. Also gives your front row plus 5K, so very nice. Also, you can play this from the drop zone. So uh, if you do play it from the drop zone, you bind it, but it does it does allow you to have like two instances of use for uh, for your order. So that's why I'm only running three, right? That's why I'm only running three, even though you might want to run, uh, you, you do want to see it more often, right? The rest of the deck is just like your ride deck. We do run four of like the, the ride lines um, just because they do have some nice effects. This one allows you to uh, come into play soul charge one and it gets 5K, so it hits some nice numbers. And the grade one allows you to, uh, when it boosts, right? If you have a grade three Narukami, who would just be of a million CB1. And then if you're, then you can bind, you can just bind uh, one of your opponent's back row cards. If you don't buy anything, then you can soul charge two. Yeah. Uh, but then this, the soul, extra soul charging does come in play because it does combo with the Dragonic Death Scythe, which allows you to soul blast two and then bind something. Uh, so basically like a free bind lets you use your soul and then uh, if you don't bind anything, then you get to draw one. So kind of similar to like, you know, Gandiva, like Gandiva Light in a way. Uh, and then also the other soul blasting is your Rising Phoenix. Uh, it, basically when you bind something via an effect, it comes out from the drop zone for the regard. I do think you can, uh, it does work when you do your multi-attack with the Vermilion and then you bind a regard. Uh, then it'll come out and then you can do multi-attacks. I'm pretty sure that works. I'll have to double check on that, see the ruling. Uh, but it does it does require you to be in the drop zone, so now it has an extra effect. We can retire it and give another unit like 5k, so pretty nice. So there's all your soul blast uh, costs. And then also I'm running like two of the grade three over trigger dragon, 
this one's like not that great, but it does allow you to draw a card, which is nice. Like that's that's nice. Um, if your opponent, if you if they don't have anything on the field, basically. Uh, but then you know it's also a great three, so you never feel bad when you like play over it or anything like that. So very nice. And then also some Togashi Rashi's just to build some extra soul. Uh, it could be anything, anything else to be honest. You could run like Cyclers. Uh, but this uh, just to see like you know discard make soul. You know, Vermilion, you discard, make soul two. Could be good. Extra soul is always good. Um, just to you know use more of your soul blast cost. So that's pretty much it. But that's pretty much a flex soul. Alright. Uh next we have is the Greedon deck. Greedon deck is kind of interesting now. Old Greedon was very clunky. You have to eat four cards. Now Greedon Mask only requires you to eat three. So you can just eat your three back rows and uh, you can attack with your two front rows, right? Nice. The the trade-off for this is the once per turn restand, so you don't get to do your triple vanguard attack anymore. But yeah, you're trading like the high roll uh, and the clunkiness for, I guess, more efficiency, right? More efficiency, which is okay. Um, and then, you know, luckily, maybe not luckily, I don't know. Your, your mask, like, bind effect, bind green effect is actually not very good. You look at top seven for like a desire devil, that's your hand. So it does plus you. But I, I don't think it's that impactful. So that's why you only run one greed on, right? Uh, otherwise, the rest of the deck, you have your mask searches. So, you know, mask searcher there. And you have the mask. Very nice. Um, then your triggers. Uh, and then the rest, I guess, like, you have some cyclers as well. All right, cyclers are pretty good. Um, it, you might soul blast a desire devil early on. But I, the, the key thing is the second effect is pretty nice. Because it allows you to just build a field for you to eat from your greed on. Um, and... Let you have like a counter blast, like kind of extra like counter blast like slot, right? Because you actually don't use that much counter blast. The only counter blast you really use is either from this card, right, which lets you search the mask, this card cycler, or the grade one um extra drive guy, uh, which requires two counter blasts. Remember, you have seven dam, you, you die at seven damage instead of six. So you definitely have a damage to work with. So yeah, pretty cool. Uh, the new desire devils we are running is just this eagle looking thing, or maybe this is a duck bill. Right? Um, the first effect is, I, I feel like it's a bit irrelevant, not that useful. Uh, and then the second one is just basically like, you know, 15k beta, 10k shield, right? So very straightforward, but still a pretty decent effect in D. And the second one is this unicorn, right? When it gets sucked in via Greedon's effect, um, you can retire a card. So extra pressure is good, extra retire pressure. But also when it's in the soul, when you're green on attacks, you can like bind this card and then force your opponent to guard with two cards. Uh, at the same time. So the battle door effect. Um, so just extra pressure would make it so your opponent can't null guard. Uh, well, they have to commit extra to null guard. And then you have some Hikos. Hikos will just pop out, you know, boost, boost your regards, and then you can suck them in next turn. Just kind of extra, extra value there. So uh, very, very nice. Uh, otherwise, just greed on a nutshell, right? Uh, then we have Chaos. So Chaos nowadays. Uh, look at this. Look, look, look at Chaos. So much one-offs, right? The non-one-offs are pretty much a Makani, so just like four of each Makani. The new Chaos, the new Chaos guy. Uh, and that's kind of it. I think you have some running two of the supporter here as well. Let's kind of look at top two and then grab a card. It gives you, it gives you a plus, right? It gives you a plus, but it's an you know, extra counter blast uh, outage there. Um, make sure to run one of every single PG, right? And then, you know... Uh, the other four of is just this order. This order is like pretty, pretty insane. Uh, calls out a Makani as well. Uh, gives it 10k. Uh, so yeah. Uh, otherwise, the rest of the just like, I, I guess, chaos. A lot of one ofs. Put in your favorite one ofs. Um, I just put in a bunch of stuff that soul charges, like this unicorn as well, that you soul charge extra in case. In a very rare chance you don't hit it, but yeah, it's just extra soul charge. Um, but you can be replaced with basically. Uh, anything else, right? Anything else. Uh, next we have is the Thegra deck. So the Thegra deck is kind of upgraded. You have this new dragon that is really cool, right? It allows you to search your deck for either a grade three or a grade two set order. And guess what they are? Your grade three set order is your Persona Ride one that turns everything, turns your Persona Ride into 15k power and draw two. And then your grade two order is the Swapper, right? So get the one that you're missing. Uh, some nice little combos they can do with new Thegra. I don't really know what to call her, right? We have we have white Thegra here, we have dark Thegra there, and then we have, I don't know, thick, thick Thegra, I don't know. Um, what she does is during the ride phase, you can, if you ride over a Thegra, it gets the name um, of the card that you wrote over, and then you can search a deck for a Thegra, and then put it into your soul. And then the second effect allows you to uh, Persona ride a Thegra from your soul, 
Um, so you can like do like two persona rides basically, but ideally what you do is like you have uh, Light Thegria here and the next turn you would ride the the, the big Thegria, Thick Thegria, and they'll gain the name of the Light Thegria, and then you'll search a deck for the Dark Thegria, and then you'll use the effect to Dark Thegria up, and then you have double persona ride, draw four, plus 30k front row, cool times, right? And then, you know, after that, you'd, you'd ride your know, Thick Thegra again, and then you get Light Thegra from the Soul, um, and then, it, well, you search a deck for a Thegra, and then, you know, get Light Thegra from the Soul, and then ride over, and then, you know, you, you do the swap like that, and getting, like, massive, massive powers. There's, like, other things you can do, right? So, if on the on your Grey 3 turn, if you have a, um, if you have Thegra already, and you have the Order, you can use the Order to get, I think, Thick Thegra from the hand, ride it, and then use the Thick Thegra to call uh, the Light Thegra from the soul, and then activate Persona Ride, uh, which is pretty good, right? Because, you know, normally you'd not be doing anything, but now you have like a plus 15k and a draw two on your first turn. That's pretty, that's pretty slick already, right? So that, that's pretty nice. And the rest of the deck, otherwise you can go your Maple Engine. Um, I'm running Red OT. This probably should be a front, actually. I think, you know, you, you draw a lot. Um, draws, like, kind of get you your pieces that you might need, but, you know, fronts, I think you'd already draw a lot already, so fronts might be nice. Uh, otherwise, cyclers, cyclers also help you get your, your, your piece that you need, but also let you kind of plus later on as, like, a kind of counterblast engine, and then it lets you, like, stack the deck a bit, which is pretty cool, too. Uh, but yeah, pretty much new Thegria in a nutshell. A pretty interesting deck, to be honest. Uh, and then we have Ezel. So a lot of people have been saying how Ezel is pretty mid, uh, pretty, uh, whatever. I think Ezel's, like, not too bad. Uh, the main thing about Ezel is that you can superior ride on your opponent. Uh, you can superior ride on your opponent when like going first, and then you'll be at level three, grade three. I mean, they'll be at grade one. I think you can even persona ride them when they're on two. Uh, whether that is good or not remains to be seen, right? You do waste one of your account, uh, persona rides, but then like your opponents at two, so they'll only be like you know they'll be a 10k power, and you'll be hitting better numbers. Uh, and with with a persona ride. You'll be, you'll be numbers where your opponent will not really want to guard. So you can like ideally hit your opponent up really, really quickly. So I don't think it's not um, not too bad, right? Basically, also what uh, Ezel wants to do, it wants to make empty slots because it's uh, it's on attack requires you to have empty slots of the... At, well, it calls things to empty slots, basically. So you want to have empty slots after you attack. Uh, what does that is Bowmanes, right? Bowmanes puts itself to the bottom of the deck right? Uh, Dindrain will also help you uh, bottom decks whatever it boosts. Yeah, so that, that that's good. It turns an, a non-empty slot usually into an empty slot. Catawala will pop itself. I'm only running one because there's actually other cards that are pretty good. Uh, and then also we have this grade two uh, Tanaru. This one puts itself into the soul when it gets boosted uh, and then it can counter charge. So nice, nice. And then... Uh, the last thing I'm also running is just this, uh, it's just this, the, the over trigger grade three. This one is, the kettle one is pretty good. I think the kettle one is really nice. Um, we'll just let you bash. We'll just keep on letting you bash, um, while your opponent, like, gets a trigger. It doesn't matter. Just keep on bashing, right? So I, I, I'm running three of this one. And then you have, like, Dindrain, which is, you know, your bottom deck. And then you have your, uh, your witch, which lets you draw one. It also gets some power, right? Nice. Nice. But the other key card we have is just this Ezel Order. This Ezel Order looks at top seven, grabs a card and gives it 5k, or calls a card and gives it 5k. So it makes your deck slightly more consistent, right? Um, you know, you want Din Drains, you, you want, that's basically one of the most key cards in the game, or you want things that like go away. This will help you get them. Um, so that's that's cool. Helps you build a field as well. So, you know, even if you have a very, very vanilla turn, if you superior right of your opponent, uh, at least you make a full field and just bash them, right? Hit numbers, bash, the next turn, just do your Ezel thing and do multi-attacks. Work out way better, right? Uh, next we have is Stoikea. Uh, so this is just Rolla. Um, I think Rolla is, like, the new Rolla is just, like, so insanely pushed, okay? Uh, and then the rest of the deck is just your old stuff. It's just your old stuff. New Rolla lets you, like, gives you, gives you, like, plant tokens, right? You get two plant tokens, and then they have, like, uh, the effect when they get retired, you draw one. So, oh, that's that's cool. And you get a Persona Ride, of course, on top of that. Uh, but then you have the new, this new grade two that's, oh, what does it do? When it comes into play, you can uh, Soul Blast one and retire two, two Regards. Oh, those two plant tokens that you called, uh, that can let you draw two. And then you call a grade two from a drop zone. Guess what's a grade two that is maybe in your drop zone? It could be, could be, uh, well, not, not her. Uh, it could be this one, this Rattalina. Yeah, right? Isn't that crazy? Um, so... It just makes that whole deck work. 
And then you have your old order, right? This order just lets you search out the Rattalinas and then you know, give some power buffs or why are you not running that? If you ever have a soul issue, you have the Mushroom Boys that goes into soul and then gives you tokens, which is exactly what Rural wants. Like, whoa, insane, right? And then like you literally have like two empty slots that you can run. The two free slots you can run is just the Cycler. I think the Cycler is okay. Right, you know, maybe get some extra draws in the morning, uh, uh, not the morning, the beginning. Also, let you counter boss one, and then, you know, I I'm pretty sure Ava's gonna be a matchup that people will see quite often because it's a, it got support, right? And it's always a good deck. So, this will help you beat that matchup, right? So, cool. Uh, otherwise, Royal West seems pretty, pretty, pretty good at the moment. Yeah. Next deck is Misty Arc. I think Misty Arc is not very good. It's like a hyper gimmick deck, and I'm not a huge fan of gimmick decks. Right, I think, so this whole deck, what it does is, so let's talk about the grade three first. The grade three is, you know, when it comes to play, you can look at the top seven cards of the deck, grab a Misty Arc pretty much from it and call it, and then even five units, your opponent discards a card from the hand. Oh, wow, discard a card. I don't know, discard only one is pretty average. And then you're talking about, we're in a format where everything retires, everything gets rid of stuff. Uh, I don't think you'll be getting this effect off very often. The second effect is just pretty much a CB1, uh, well, you're a CB1 to look to. It's a free. It's a free call. I'm, 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 the CB1's the second effect. My bad. My bad. But yeah, the second one is CB1. You know, when it attacks, you can bounce with your Misty Arc cards, and you can call another Misty Arc card from your hand. Um, with that is a different. That has a different name from that that you bounced. So that's it. Four attacks. Cool. Um, but the the gimmick comes with this this giraffe turtle. I think the giraffe turtle. This one allows you to, so when it comes into play, you can Soul Blast one, and then one of your opponent's units can't stand in the next stand phase. But it also has another cool effect. Uh, act once per turn, you can buy in this, and then a, another uh, another Misty Art card that's not the same name as this. You bind them, and then you call them out. So you get to trigger all the on-play effects. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So with this, you know, yay, they can't stand. You kind of bounce this... I don't know. Is this a seal? A seal dolphin? A seal dolphin? Or just a dolphin? Or a stingray dolphin? I don't know. You can, you can maybe bounce this, and this comes back. It soul charges one, and then one of your units, one of your punch units, can't intercept. Yo! Is this something can't stand and intercept? So you can come and kind of do that. That's like a combo. Uh, uh, and then, you know, since the giraffe is kind of so important, you know, your dude, your. I don't know, your, your dragon can like bounce that and then call this this dragon that has a come into play plus 5k and counter blast one draw card. So, yay! But then it combos with the rabbit that has sunglasses um, that counter charges one. So, you know, hey, that works too, right? And then that's that's kind of it. If you need soul, you have the mushroom boys again. But then I also put like four of her because, you know, cyclers draw cards. Yeah, cool. Um, I do think though that, you know, basically all the Misty Art cards call themselves out. So it's, you probably don't really have much soul. So just get one of the soul charging cards. But yeah, uh, she also has the, her effect. Doesn't like, it's like CB1, your opponent can't stand or intercept their front row. So pretty much like, she's like a giraffe and a dolphin in one. You If, you, if you're getting gimmick, you might as well just go full gimmick, right? Might as well go full gimmick, be super annoying. That's basically the deck, all right? So yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I, maybe there's better ways to build this. Uh, seems pretty pretty gimmicky. That's my thoughts. Next we have is Ava. So Ava, let's talk about Ava. Uh, what did we change in Ava? We took out assemblers. We took out like one old Ava. We added three of the new Ava in, uh, and the deck is done. Right, the deck is done. The deck. I think I think Ava was already pretty good. The new Ava is just like another extra extra power buff in that you don't require any CP. You don't need to. Um, you don't need to call a you don't have to call a card from the deck of the hand you can call it from the drop you can call an obscure from the drop so that's already that's already a nice little extra effect but otherwise the rest of the deck is just pretty much as it was before um habitable zone is pretty much the, the main key card of the entire deck it just makes your deck hand better lets you play more orders a turn uh and then lets you uh you know play the, the docking one as well the docking one you know boost more with the grade twos the obscates very cool the gandhi will definitely be a deck still in the meta uh that does help. But yeah, I, I feel like just this extra, 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 extra few cards in the deck. Your deck's set. Your deck's done. All good. Right? And then lastly, we have is the, uh, the Gigant Arms. 
One, um, this guy makes arms, has arms, and you attach the arms together, uh, and then make a big Vanga column and go boom. Right, what is cool about this deck? Well, uh, one thing is I'm running four fronts instead of like eight, three, I'm running seven, four, uh, because, you know, when you attach the arms, right, they also get power. So one of those front triggers becomes like a 30K front trigger. Uh, so that's pretty cool. That makes guarding really, really difficult. Uh, this is a four attacker deck. Ideally, you have like two arms in the front. You attack with them first. Then the arms go into this, join up, make a big attack. And then this guy will call out one of the arms again. Um, and then the arms themselves have like, have effects too. They have CB1 effects. So you want to run a Bobo mean to kind of mitigate the CB1. Uh, and then you have, um, then you have this like, this kind of, uh, this, this machine factory that lets you uh, look at top X, top seven of your deck for any armed arms. You can like either drop them or if there's already one drop, you can add them to hand. If you add them to hand, it goes to soul. But you know, you, that's fine. Uh, and then it lets you also like grab arms from the drop zone and then put them onto the field, right? In the open slots on the field. So because you can basically make a full field full of arms, right? You can uh, use the docking, uh, the dock that allows you to give them boost. So that's cool, right? That's cool. Uh, running like one copy of Fry just for extra Persona Ride, um, just to get that extra power. And then also two of Rodney, the jetpack, jet boots kid. Uh, this one allows you to just, it's, it's, it's pretty much 18K. It's pretty much 18k. Um, it does let to, it can stand, right? It can stand after your Vanguard attacks. Um, and for Soul Blast, I think the Soul Blast is like kind of like low value, but if you have a lot of soul, then sure, right? You can put some extra power there um, and go for it. Also, we have some assemblers too. Assembler does let you try and grab some of the, the set orders. Um, so that's that's nice. But that's pretty much it. Very simple deck, very straightforward deck for uh, for uh, for the arms, arms deck. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much all the decks for set 11. Again, I have to emphasize these are preliminary builds. This is just to help you get you going, right? A base for your deck to build, and then you can kind of build more after that, make them more uh, precise, more better, uh, and then, yeah, win more games, right? So with that, let me know what you think in the comments below, right? If I missed anything, uh, and then I'll see you all next time, all right? Bye.